So uh, I will, uh, my, my talk is a little bit uh, different from what we heard. There's no, huh? there's no sound. There's no dynamic and uh, uh, no, um, There is, uh, I, I want to talk about uh, some geometric problems on which I, I'm working on since, uh, since a long time, in fact. And the, 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 I mean the, the tools and the statement of the results, everything is, is very simple. I think you will, uh, you will understand what kind of problem is this. Uh, my, the, the, I have some slides there. I prepared them because there are some pictures in this slide, but the slides. I will show them when, when it is needed. Uh, some of the pictures will be, some of the pictures are related to uh, my talk in the sense that um, these maps between surfaces, um, the, one of the motivations, in fact, the, the uh, Substantial motivation comes from geography. And uh, at the beginning, when I worked on this subject, I didn't know this. In fact, I didn't know what uh, what geographers do and so on. And then, then I learned this uh, uh, gradually. Uh, I, I, I wrote a book on geography, in fact, after this, because I, I found this very interesting. And, and then with Danny, uh, <laughs> I published uh, some papers on this. He has this uh, uh, journal, Ganita Bharati, which is a journal for history of the mathematics. So uh, this, uh, in the last uh, 10 years or so, uh, I have uh, maybe 10, 10, 10 papers in your journal. <laughs> uh, I have maybe 10 papers in your journal in the last 10 years, almost every year one new, new paper, in fact. And we share together, in fact, with Danny, we share this, uh, this feeling that uh, mathematicians need to, uh, need to work on history of, uh, of mathematics. Otherwise, uh, this field is uh, um, sometimes, I mean, non-mathematicians work on, on history of mathematics and it's sometimes uh, there are some catastrophes sometimes. So uh, yeah, I, I edited also, also a book with, with Danny on, uh, on history and I, I will show you some pictures. Okay, so let me first, start, yeah, let, me, let me start with the, with, with the motivation. So, uh, uh, so the, the geographers, what they, what they do, in fact, you have, uh, you have a sphere and then you have a region of the sphere, like uh, like um, the like India country, or, so. or it could be either. In fact, in the history of geography, you have you have either either the Earth uh, or maybe also the the sky, the celestial sphere, uh, which you can uh, which you can consider as a as a sphere, and then you want to you want to make maps. You want to make maps. And it is known that uh, it is known that um, uh, it's impossible to make exact maps. Uh, you want to you want to you want to map you want to map a curved uh, a curved a curved surface to a Euclidean surface, which is a sphere, and uh, there is some distortion. It has to have some. It has to have some distortion, and this was known since. This was known since antiquity. In fact, that you cannot make uh, exact maps. And uh, let me mention a theorem. A theorem that goes back to uh, and allows. Menelaus of Alexandria, 
uh, with its first century. First century. So it tells you the following. Uh, uh, okay, let's draw a spherical triangle. A spherical triangle, ABC. Uh, if you take the midpoint here, let's call it M, and the midpoint here, we call it N, and we join the two, uh, uh, the two points by a shortest path, uh, then we have, uh, well, MN is greater, strictly greater than AB over two. The distance between M and N is greater than the distance between A and B divided by two. This is, this is proposition 12 of, of this book of Menelaus called the spherics. So, uh, in fact, uh, it's not possible to, 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 to send this piece of, piece of, uh, piece of, of a sphere to the plane, preserving distances, preserving distances are even up to scale, it's not possible. So when, when you see maps, uh, when they say, uh, whatever, one over uh, 100,000, then this is, uh, this is not possible, it's a lie. It cannot, you cannot just uh, measure the maps, uh, the measure on the map the distances and multiply by a factor. Okay. So this was known uh, since since uh, since antiquity, maybe before. I don't know, but I know this theorem. Uh, so people search for uh, best maps. Best maps. Best maps from the sphere, or from portions of the sphere onto the onto the plane, and this is uh, this is the work of uh, cartographers. In fact, since so so, the, uh, let me just mention the main the main uh, mathematicians uh, who who worked who has substantial work on this. So there are there are there are quite quite a lot. I will mention just a few of them. So this is uh, Ptolemy. I will tell you a little bit what, what, what he did. And then you have, uh, I mean, Ptolemy is the, Ptolemy is the, uh, is the uh, uh, he assembled everything that was known at his time in his, in his book uh, called Geography. In this book, he he explains how to draw maps, how to draw maps, and uh, and a part of the book are coordinates of places. In fact, including coordinates of places in India. In fact, how to draw the map of India and so on and so on. I mean, this is a very important book for geographer. It said it stayed as the most important book until eleventh or or twelfth century until the Arabs came and they, they did, they, they studied Ptolemy and they, they did new stuff on geography. And then uh, the next interesting thing is, uh, for us is Euler, Lagrange, and Lambert. So I will explain to you a little bit, a little bit what, what, what they did. And then after this, you have, uh, after this, I want to mention uh, Chebyshev. Uh, you know Chebyshev, uh, he was working on approximation theory. I mean, he, his most important thing, he wanted to approximate and many, 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 many kinds of things. So it's natural that he works on this problem of geographical maps. And then uh, Darbu, I want to mention Darbu in his book on the on the uh, differential geometry of surfaces, there are uh, several sections on geography. 
And then uh, in the 20th century, I want to mention uh, uh, Milner. Uh, Milner, he has a paper 1969 called A Problem in Cartography. And then I want to talk uh, now, my, my, my mathematics is about this theory of Thurston, uh, best maps between surfaces. So he, he, he does not talk about geography in, the, in his, in his, uh, in his uh, paper, but uh, it is related. In fact, uh, I was giving a talk on this uh, a few months ago in, 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 uh, at Brown University, and there was a student of us, and uh, uh, this is uh, Rick Schwartz. And when I talk about it, when I said that, uh, Thurston, I don't know if he was aware of the relation with geography. He told me, but he used to come, Thurston used to come several times to his class with maps, in fact, and show us maps and how to do it. So, so he was aware of the, of the relation of, with geography. Okay, so what are the best, what, what kind of best maps uh, all, these, all these people uh, looked for? Uh, you see, first uh, on the uh, uh, on the sphere, which is, as I said, we, we shall consider that we have the Earth, not, not the celestial sphere. Uh, you have you have these uh, you have these uh, you have these parallels. Uh, and you have these uh, you have these longitudes. Uh, which make two special foliations of the sphere. In fact, it was very important in Ptolemy's work. He didn't have the word the word foliation, but he he he, he knew about foliations, of course. So, uh, uh, okay. So we know now that we cannot represent. We cannot have a faithful representation. Uh, there were several several uh, several uh, possibilities for to to uh, for for uh, useful maps first. Uh, you want uh, okay the, the uh, uh, parallels parallels and uh, longitudes uh, uh, to be sent to be sent to so either. Uh, straight lines. Sometimes you want them to be sent to straight lines. Some, some, uh, sometimes you want them to be uh, sent to circles uh, because of several reasons. In fact, because they give you the impression. In fact, when you have when you have a map, uh, sometimes you have maps. Uh, I will show you some pictures. And you show maps uh, like this. Otherwise, you have maps. Uh, which look like this, the image of the equator and the other parallels and so on. I mean, because also it's easier to, it's easy to draw, uh, it's easier to draw circles than, or straight lines and something else. This is one reason, but another reason is that they give you, they give you the impression of, uh, of the shape, of the shape of the earth. I mean, it's, it's more, when you look at a map, uh, you don't expect the, these, these special lines to be sent to uh, wiggly lines. So this is one, one, this is one, these are some of the properties which uh, these, uh, I mean, all of them uh, wanted to, 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 to satisfy. Uh, so, and then, uh, Distribution 
uh, yes, you are right. Yes, uh, uh, yeah, it's a good question. In fact, uh, yeah, in fact, the North and the South Pole play since uh, since uh, withdrawal maps played a special role. Yes, you're right. Uh, yes, yes, you're right. Uh, okay, uh, then you have you have uh, other requirements. Say, uh, well, uh, you cannot you cannot. Uh, I said here, uh, as a corollary of this uh, theorem, you cannot have exact, exact maps. But uh, uh, since the time of, uh, since the time of Ptolemy, uh, people realize that okay, on, on special, on some special, uh, on some special parallel. Uh, on some special parallels, which you choose uh, uh, distances, you want distances uh, to be preserved. Uh, for instance, uh, for Ptolemy, it was uh, it was the two parallels passing by by important cities, by the by, in particular by the city of Alexandria. And uh, by the island of Rhodes, he wants this to be exact. And then, uh, okay, I mentioned Euler. I mentioned Euler. Let me uh, let me uh, talk about Euler. So Euler has uh, has three major papers on geography. Euler was a geographer, in fact, officially. In fact, uh, you see the, in the in the Saint Petersburg. Uh, 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 mathematical section of, uh, I mean, of the Academy of Sciences, there was uh, uh, a department of geography. Uh, the department of geography was led by first when the, when the uh, uh, academy started, it was led by a famous French geographer called De Lille. De Lille was a famous geographer and astronomer, the, one of the most famous geographers in, in, in Paris. He was hired in St. Petersburg. But, but when he arrived there, he needed uh, to collaborate with mathematicians. So at some point, Euler was his collaborator. And then De Lille was, uh, I mean, there were, prob were problems and uh, uh, they, they claimed he was a spy and so on. So De Lille went. And uh, Euler became the head of this department of geography, and he he he, he published this uh, called uh, the Russian Atlas. I mean, under under his uh, direction, under the direction of Euler, he published this atlas. He wrote the introduction, in fact, the preface of this atlas and the explanations of the maps, uh, how he drew them and why he drew them like this, and so on, and then. And then he wrote three three important papers. In fact, the three papers, uh, the three papers were uh, one of them is called on on the Lille method, something like that. On the Lille's method of uh, so the Lille was not a mathematician, but he had. Uh, uh, I mean, he had. Uh, you see, I, I will show you. Uh, it will appear several times. Uh, I mean, it appeared to me several times. Uh, the geographers knew before mathematicians proved the theorem rigorously. Um, uh, the geographers had the intuition, and they knew that it was, it should be like that. Uh, so, so they used the Lille method, and then uh, Euler proved that it is the best method for 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 great. I mean, for great lands. Uh, for, for this is for drawing the the Eurasian Empire. And uh, and you must remember that at that time it was very very important, in fact, to have maps. It was very important to have maps. It was there were competition between uh, countries uh, uh, who had scientists to uh, uh, to to draw uh, to draw maps. And when when Euler uh, 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 quitted 
uh, St. Petersburg, and he went uh, for 15 years in, in Berlin. And then after this, he came to St. Petersburg again. But in Berlin, they asked him to, again, to, to work on geography. And he published there the, the uh, what is called the, uh, uh, it's not called the German Atlas, but something something like that, another atlas of, of so that uh, Euler published. So uh, yes, let me, uh, now let me, uh, so Lagrange, Lagrange is at the more or less uh, the same, uh, the same epoch than, than, uh, than Euler. Lagrange was 20 years uh, younger than, 20 years younger than Euler, but uh, Euler had a, a, a big, I mean, he earlier was a big admirer of, of this young Lagrange. And Lagrange wrote, a, wrote two papers uh, called, uh, in English, uh, on the construction, on the construction of geographical maps. So one and two. Uh, the title is in French, in fact, La Construction des Cartes Géographiques. So uh, he, uh, the, 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 uh, under the hypothesis, so he, he, he showed how to draw a map, and he was always under the hypothesis of the map is conformal. So what are the best maps? Uh, what are the best, what, if, you, if, you, if you restrict yourself to maps that preserve angles, they knew, in fact, they knew since antiquity that you have maps that preserve angles. For instance, the stereographic projection preserves angles. Another projection called the, uh, 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 I forgot the name anyway. Another, so, so there are several kinds of stereo, stereographic projections. You can either uh, Project on a plane which is, which is, which passes through the uh, this point, or so. So they, have, they all. I mean, they are all. Uh, uh, projective in, in the sense of projective geometry, but they have several names. So anyway, so they were uh, Ptolemy were, were, was aware of this. So, so uh, uh, you see the the. Uh, here we have the, the epoch of uh, where uh, uh, complex uh, uh, complex one one dimensional geometry uh, enters in the story, and you know that uh, holomorphic maps holomorphic maps uh, preserve angles, right? Holomorphic maps. Uh, preserve angles, and not only this, but uh, holomorphic maps have a complex derivative at each point, and, and this complex derivative has, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a norm, there's an absolute value of this uh, complex derivative at each point, and then you can, you can ask, well, uh, uh, here I asked, uh, I asked, what does it mean a best map, you see, what does it mean a best map? In what sense is this the best map? But when you know that uh, there's a complex, uh, complex derivative, then you can take uh, the integral. Uh, so you must remember that at this epoch of Euler and Lagrange, you had differential and integral calculus. The integral of this, of this, uh, of this uh, uh, absolute value of the complex derivative. You want this to be uh, minimum, or you want it to, you want the map. I mean, you you want a certain uh, a certain integral, in fact, it's, it's, they, 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 so the optimization, in fact, the optimal map, uh, the optimal map was found, was found through the calculus of variations. This is typically a problem of calculus of variations now to find a, a, best, a, best, a best map. And one of the papers, so I, I said this is, 
one a paper of Euler on the Lille's on the Lille's method. The other paper is one other paper is called uh, uh, well, let me say it uh, on the on the applications of uh, he says the met the method of uh, minima and maxima, which he means the calculus of variation to uh, cartography. This is more or less the title of this paper. And then the, so this is this is uh, this is the work of uh, uh, I mean important work of Euler of Lagrange, and then Lambert is also a, uh, Lambert was of the same epoch, same up, same epoch as he's um, he's. Uh, Less well known than uh, uh, Euler, but uh, uh, he he was um, important. So, anybody uh, has heard the, the name of Lambert? Yes, yes. Lambert coordinates. Yes, you're right. Lambert coordinates. This is uh, very good. Yes. In fact, Lambert was a mathematician, uh, very talented, uh, and he, very interesting because uh, one of the things that are very interesting. Interesting. Uh, um, he, he 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 was from a poor family, in fact, and they took him out from school at age thirteen. So at age thirteen, he was helping his father. He had he had a shop, but he liked uh, science and he worked by himself. And uh, he worked hard. He he read books and so on. At the end, the, the last ten years of his life, he was member of the Academy, the Prussian Academy of Sciences in Berlin. In fact, he became a very well-known mathematician. And Euler liked him very much. One of the reasons is that he came from his, they came from the same village, in fact, uh, near, near, uh, near, near Basel. So, uh, okay, so there are Lambert coordinates, yes. Uh, and uh, Lambert is the first who proved that, uh, uh, that pi is irrational. He's well known for this. Uh, and he conjectured that pi is uh, transcendental, in fact, and it was proved much, much later. And also, so Lambert was a, 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 in geography. Uh, uh, in his, in his, uh, in his uh, paper, in his memoir, uh, he had uh, beautiful ideas. In fact, for instance, you have something called. Uh, 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 This uh, Mercator map, which was uh, which was used in navigation, in fact, the famous map, which was used in navigation, and then you, you have other maps, uh, which I, 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 don't, I mean, so so uh, uh, he he used to study one parameter. In his paper, he has a study of one parameter, one parameters maps. So interpolating, for instance, between the the. Uh, the Mercator map and the stereographic projection, you see, with a variable t, and then studying what, uh, studying all these maps together. So this, this I find, this I find a, a important idea. Okay, I won't talk about uh, Chebyshev and Darbu, but I will talk about Milner, but later on because I need, I need my slides. Okay. Oh. Let me let me let me let me talk about. Uh, I will come back to geography, but let me talk about uh, about the problems uh, that that were that uh, that arise from Thurston's work. So this is his paper uh, called uh, minimal minimal. Stretch maps between hyperbolic surfaces. You see, here we had uh, we had maps. Uh, we, are, we are talking about maps from the uh, from the sphere to the plane, and asking what are the best the best maps. Here we have uh, maps between hyperbolic surfaces, like. Uh, uh, okay, so let me let us draw standard surface, closed surface of genus two, and then another one here, another one here with a long tube. Uh, 
a very a very short geodesic, a very short closed geodesic, and then on the tube. And then the question is uh, uh, how to how to construct the best Lipschitz map and the existence of best Lipschitz map. So this paper of Thurston was this was a preprint nineteen eighty five or 86, I think it's 1985, but, but people write 1856. Uh, it's, a, I mean, it's the methods of this paper are, are really very elementary. In fact, it's, it's elementary, it's element, elementary hyperbolic geometry. Very, I mean, everything is, everything is, uh, is constructed by hand, in fact, but it considers a very difficult paper, in fact, maybe, maybe because it's, uh, it's it's elementary. In fact, it's just you, the, the, you go to the basics. I mean, you don't you don't you don't need to you don't you don't you don't apply theorems to you don't apply no known theorems to prove what you what you have to prove. You, you have just to start to start from the from the very basics. So the paper, in fact, uh, has an interesting story because it was it was uh, it was submitted to. To topology, to the journal topology, and then uh, there was a thick uh, uh, referee referee report, which I have a copy. But but Thurston never 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 made. Uh, I mean, he never changed anything in the paper. He just left it as a as a preprint, and then he put it on the archive when the archive existed. And now they just publish it in the in Thurston's uh, collected works, which are just. It just appeared this year, and you, you can find this paper there. But he, he, it's on the web, so 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 um, now it became these people. I mean, in my field, beca became a very popular subject, as as they say. And I mean, there are more and more people working on minimal stretch maps. So I want to tell you a little bit of the problems. Uh, No. Uh, uh, okay, so we, I have a map. I have a, say I have a homeomorphism F, a homeomorphism between these two surfaces. And then I define uh, the Lipschitz constant of F uh, as the supremum, well, of the, uh, uh, the supremum of uh, the distance on the tar on the target surface between f of x and f of y divided by the distance uh, between x and y. The distance now is on the third surface, and then you take the supremum of all this uh, for x different from from y. X and Y, X and Y are here. And then uh, you see, let's call these two hyperbolic structures uh, G and H. Okay, I don't like this very much because we have to change. This is a Greek letter, let's make it pi and F of G, F, F of, um, this is the Lipschitz of phi. The phi's are, are the maps. And then the hyperbolic structures are, uh, are uh, written by uh, Latin letters. Okay. And then uh, you define the, well, uh, L between G and H. You define a distance between the two metrics by taking, uh, well, the logarithm. Uh, let me let me put it here. The infimum of the logarithm of L of phi. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Lipschitz of phi. 
the infimo for all phi uh, homeomorphism say uh, well homeomorphism uh, homotopic to the identity I mean if you work on surface and so on you know why, why this has to be homotopic identity otherwise you don't care about this okay and uh, in this case uh, in this case, well, uh, you get a, you get a, you get, get a metric. Uh, this L, you get a metric on, well, P of S, the Teichmuller space of S, the space of all hyperbolic metrics up to. Uh, up to homeomorphism isotopic to, to the identity. Okay, so you get a metric, and this is called the. Uh, this is called now the Thurston metric. Uh, it has, uh, it has, uh, well, it has many interesting properties. Uh, one one property which I, I want to to, to say uh, um, I want to say this property I want to state one this property one of these properties uh, one basic property in fact in fact all the properties are important you see it turns out that uh, uh, this space this Teichmuller space equipped with this first metric is uh, let me put it here. P of S is a geodesic space that is any two points are joined by a geodesic. So this is uh, there's no uh, there's no Riemannian geometry here. I mean, geodesic just means uh, so. Uh, let me let me just recall that a geodesic a geodesic uh, well is a path let's call it uh, gamma from an interval uh, interval in r into uh, uh, this metric space uh, such that uh, if I take uh, three points x1, x2, x3 in that order in the in the interval i, then um, uh, well L of uh, Gamma of x one, gamma of x three, is equal to L of gamma x one, gamma of x two, plus L of gamma of x two, gamma of x three. That is, the triangle inequality becomes an equality on this, on this. Uh, uh, on this path, this is the usual definition of of a geodesic in a metric space. We don't have geodesic equations. We don't. We, we don't have anything like that. So this is this is metric metric geometry, and uh, and Uh, this is one. Uh, this is important property of this space. So, 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 uh, so I, if I take any two uh, uh, hyperbolic surfaces, uh, I can construct a geodesic uh, going from one to the other for this metric. And Thurston shows how to construct, and he has explicit. I mean, the, the method is uh, the construction is constructive. In fact, uh, it uses uh, it uses some. Uh, elementary technology in hyperbolic geometry, in, in particular, with uh, uh, these 
uh, laminations, which we talked about uh, yesterday. And these laminations, you know, uh, they, they play the same role as these, uh, these foliations of the sphere when you talk about, uh, about uh, maps in this sense of geographical maps. You see, they are, they are uh, you see, where, 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 a best leaf sheets map, in, in fact, a best leaf sheets map, but I, I cannot do the whole construction here. I cannot do any, uh, any of, the, of these constructions, but you, you will find some, some you will always find find some lines, geodesic lines here, uh, where the the best the, the, the Lipschitz map the best Lipschitz constant is realized on these on these maps. So this reminds this reminds you of 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 the of these uh, of these uh, lines which which uh, uh, Ptolemy and then Euler and so on uh, they want uh, they wanted their their best uh, Maps to be uh, exact. The best lip, the best Lipschitz constant is realized on these maps. Okay, so this is one. This is one property, and then the other property. Let let me just give uh, another. Uh, well, another formula. Uh, another formula for the distance. Um, okay, so this is uh, k between g and h. You see, to to compare to compare uh, two hyperbolic surfaces, uh, you can compare the lengths of closed geodesics. This you know, this you know this, right? Uh, so here you say this is well the supremum of uh, the lengths for h of gamma divided by the length of g of gamma and this is gamma so gamma is uh, well uh, i want to say the same closed geodesics but to put it in in, in an understandable way gamma gamma is a uh, well gamma is a homotopy class Of closed simple curve on the surface S, and L H of gamma is the length, the length of the unique. Uh, this is a theorem of uh, hyperbolic geometry that in a, uh, in each homotopy class of the closed simple curve you have a unique geodesic. In this class, so uh, it is natural to use this as a comparison between the two, the two hyperbolic structures. And the, one of the one of the theorems is that k is equal to l. This is this is proved also in that theorem of Thurston. Uh, the proof is not easy at all. In fact, it's a difficult proof. And then, and then. Uh, uh, maybe I want to, so uh, I need uh, this uh, this man here because I want to look at my computer after this. I don't know why he disappeared. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, it turns out that, uh, and this is this is one uh, another another uh, another. Uh, Another aspect of this of this met metric is that in, it turns out it is it is a Finsler metric. Let me write it here. It is a Finsler metric. So what is a Finsler metric, in fact? Thank you. Okay. <laughs> a Finsler metric is uh, uh, is a, a family. I want to do it like this. Uh, 
Yes, in one minute. Yes, yeah, wait, wait a minute. A family of, a family of, uh, a family of, a family of what? Uh, a family of convex. A family of convex sets. A Finsler metric is a family of convex sets. Uh, well, parameterized. Uh, this is a Finsler metric, say, on on a manifold. Let's call it T, like our Teichmuller space there. So this is a family of convex set parameterized by T. Uh, and in fact, at each point of your space, uh, you have a you you have a convex set. You have a convex set. Uh, which you think of as uh, the unit convex, the unit convex ball in the tangent space at that point, the unit convex ball of some norm uh, that is uh, uh, um, a, a, a convex set containing the origin. I didn't say, but everything we said here about uh, metrics, these metrics are not necessarily symmetric. From so the distance from they are metrics, except that the distance from A to B is not equal to the distance from B to A. The definition I gave here, uh, the, uh, I mean, it doesn't tell you that the, the, the distance from A to B is equal to the distance from B to A. The, 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 the uh, triangle inequality is obviously satisfied because of the logarithm, but, but this thing uh, is, is, is not true, in fact. So the, the, your convex sets uh, are not necessarily uh, symmetric uh, about the origin. So you see, uh, I have, uh, I, I can, you can take whatever. I mean, if you, if you, if you like uh, geometry, if you want to, to, to a problem in, in geometry, I think an interesting problem in, in, uh, in, in metric geometry. You take, you take a, uh, uh, you take a space here, like. Uh, this uh, octagon, and then you say, well, at, uh, you you uh, you you find a way uh, of defining. I mean, a best way of defining. At each point, you find. At each point, you give a you give a, a, a convex set, whatever. I drew it like this. A convex set like this. Uh, and you declare that this, these convex sets are the unit balls of this of this uh, for a norm. And then from this, uh, when you have a path on this uh, in this space, uh, a C one map, uh, then you can you can uh, you can define its length because you have tangent vectors and each tangent vector. Since you know what is what is the unit the unit ball, then the, the, then you know what is the the uh, the uh, uh, the length of this vector. So you find you you can find the length of this path, and then you say that the difference between this point and this point is the minimum uh, the minimum length of paths between them. You you have a metric, and then you can ask. Well, uh, I, I defined it randomly here, but uh, for uh, you can define you can define it uh, more carefully, and you can invent a definition and say, oh, okay. So uh, what are the geodesics for this metric that I just defined? What are the geodesics? What are the lines of the... So you want a metric where, where the geodesics are, are uh, uh, pieces, of, pieces of circles or pieces of ellipses and so on and so on. So there are infinitely many problems here in geometry. You're just using... Uh, so uh, let me just say here that uh, uh, first and... Uh, uh, proves proves uh, in, that this metric in fin is Finsler, and at each point, in fact, there's a, a beautiful theorem. Mm. At each point, at each point, uh, the convex convex set, the associated convex set, and the unit ball. You see there, uh, there I gave you a random, uh, a randomly defined uh, uh, 
uh, field of uh, convex set. But here it's the convex set is 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 an embedding. I will just say the words in embedding of a space called uh, measured uh, lamination space. in T of S uh, defined by the differential of the length function. A measured lamination, like a closed curve has a length, a measured lamination has a, has a length, and then you have a natural function, which is known in, uh, since Thurston defined it uh, 10 years before this paper. And then you have, uh, so, so this is uh, really, for me, it's the, the first time where I see a Finsler manifold where these, these unit balls, these unit balls have such a, such a geometric meaning, in fact. The unit balls are, are, are uh, embeddings. The, the, the uh, I want to say here, projective, let me write it here, projective lamination, uh, lamina projective measured lamination space so that it's the boundary of a convex set. And then the, the point is, is inside and, and that's, uh, so, okay. Um, I, unfortunately, I cannot say a lot now about this. Uh, maybe just no, doesn't doesn't matter. Come, thank you. <laughs> I want to show a few pictures here. Just what do I do now? Oh, okay. Okay. So uh, I wanted to show several things. One of them is this picture with uh, Danny in uh, in Strasbourg. Mm. Uh, so this was at. Uh, at uh, a conference called uh, Geometry in History. Uh, yes, the next one. Ah, okay, okay. Okay, this is also a picture of Daniel in Strasbourg with uh, just now. Mm. This is me and Daniel, but I don't remember where it is. Uh, <laughs> for, uh, this is a picture where I am very serious and he's less serious than me. Usually it's the contrary. Uh, this is, uh, I think it's in, uh, in Bombay. In Bombay, okay. Okay, so this is one thing I wanted to show. Uh, uh, well, the, 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 the important thing is, uh, no, okay, this is, this is uh, I know I have uh, less than one minute now. So this is, uh, this is the book, uh, uh, this is the book that we, uh, that we edited and you see there are, uh, I mean, these articles on history are written by, uh, by mathematicians. Can you see here? Okay, so uh, we should not, uh, we, I mean, we, here and here. I don't know if you see, but we, we one of our, one of the things we want, to, uh, we, I mean, want is to make mathematicians uh, read and know about their history better than linguists, you know, because you know, sometimes the people who do history of mathematics, they, they did, uh, well, they studied Greek or, or whatever, or and then they, they translate uh, the papers by, by Euclid or, or by Euler, and then uh, they do history, but without understanding the mathematics, sometimes it is. So, uh, yes, so this is, Mm, this is a this is a recent book. I, I will show you just the the uh, just the cover uh, because I like I like I'm proud of the picture. In fact, uh, this is a, this is a picture. This is a painting by by the Dutch painter Vermeer. You see, he it shows a. Uh, it's called the geographer. It's called the geographer. So he's, this is a geographer. 
dressed in a silk, like Japanese maybe uh, uh, robe, and he has this compass in his hand. He's looking at a map. And there's also a map, another map on the wall, and there's a, a third map uh, uh, on the cabinet there. And, and this is, uh, I didn't tell you why, uh, why I published this book. In fact, it came, it came uh, there, there was a reason, but uh, uh, okay. I, uh, we, I mean, that's five, time is, time is finished. So in this, in this, this no sorry it's here yes so in this in this in this book there are there there's a series of uh, papers translations of papers by Euler uh, Lagrange and Lambert on on uh, on geography mm. uh, I talked about the De Lille De Lille geographical projection I talk about uh, Mm. Uh, so this uh, just just uh, one last thing. Uh, it was realized at the epoch of Euler, in fact, just a little bit before that the Earth was not a sphere but a spheroid. In fact, uh, this is for, this comes from Newton uh, theory. In fact, Newton gravitation theory. It's it's a, it's a little bit flattened flattened at the poles. So so. Uh, Euler thought that instead of spherical trigonometry, we should we should write uh, uh, a book, uh, well, a memoir on elements of sp spheroidal trigonometry. So he has triangles on the on the spheroid instead of the spheres, and he computes. Uh, the, I mean, he tries to do the the, uh, the, the trigonometry, uh, and, and then it was important because other people after him did, uh, they made the same, th because uh, the, the methods of differential calculus were, were there. So he, he, he did this for the spheroid, and then after this, they did it for uh, surfaces of revolution instead of the spheroid. And then, uh, and then the more general surfaces, the study of more general surfaces. Uh, by Darbu and other people. So, but this this is an important. This was an important step in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, differential geometry. Okay, thank you. Hello. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, can I pass a microphone to him? lecture thank you. thank you for the beautiful lecture thank you very much um uh, my question is maybe you want to write also a book about 19th century mathematics and geography because uh, yes. of course gauss was uh, a great triangulation inventor and he measured the kingdom of hannover where i grew up and in fact there you can see the stones he put into the countryside uh, it is to do the yeah, measurements. Yeah, it is a very good. Yeah, what you say? Yes, yes. In fact, uh, uh, let me say that uh, 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 triangulation started in, an, in antiquity. You know, uh, Gauss, Gauss, of course, did the triangulation of the of the uh, of the Hanover region and so on. When he was asked, he was a geographer, in fact, like Euler. And uh, uh, le uh, this method of triangulation is very interesting. You know, because. Uh, it has to do with with this, with the sphere spherical geometry. Uh, let me let me let me give you just the the main idea. Uh, so you want to comp you, you want to find a distance uh, of two uh, between two very far cities. Okay. okay? Uh, how do you measure this distance? Suppose you are you, suppose you live. Uh, okay. In, in, uh, I said it was long before, but suppose you live in in the uh, in in the epoch of uh, Gauss. Uh, uh, how, do, how how can you imagine doing this? So uh, uh, one 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 of the one of the things that people imagined, while well, you construct some. Uh, 
smaller triangles. Uh, small, well, small time. I, I mean, for a uh, distance between Paris and Montpellier, uh, when they computed the distance, there were maybe uh, uh, maybe 200, 200 triangles, I would say. It's not uh, thousands of triangles, it, it, maybe something like that. Uh, so uh, the thing is that uh, in spherical geometry, one of the properties of triangles in spherical geometry and it's also in that book of uh, Menelaus. It was known since antiquity that uh, when you know the three angles of a triangle, then you know the sides. In spherical geometry, the angles determine the sides. There are trigonometric formulas. It's not like in Euclidean geometry. In spherical uh, geometry, the three angles determine the, si the, the, the length of the sides. And the angles here, they, they had methods for, for uh, computing the angles uh, by astronomy, in fact. And this is known uh, uh, since, I mean, uh, since antiquity, they could, uh, by astronomical observations, you could go. So you have these, you have these uh, spherical uh, triangles, and then you can compute all these angles. And when you have computed all the angles, uh, then you know the sides. And when you know the sides of all these triangles, then it is possible to uh, to know the size of this arc here. So this is the method of triangulation. And then Euler, after after he he he, do, he, he after he uh, after he worked on triangulations, he had the idea of uh, the well the curvature for surfaces. He, his idea came from geography, and then the uh, triangulations of surfaces to uh, for many many things. You asked me yesterday. Somebody asked me something about Euler Poincaré and told him. You can do you can you can do a triangulation of the surface and then compute the characteristic Euler characteristic and so on. Yes, yes. The, the geometry in the nineteenth century is. Uh, I wanted to talk about uh, uh, Chebyshev also, which is nineteenth uh, century. In fact, very interesting uh, uh, geography geography paper. Yes. Um, yeah, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is that um, in the beginning, you gave us um, this analogy while drawing maps that certain cities are important and you want yes. the distances to be reflected on the maps. Yes. Uh, and then more precisely, you told us about these laminations along which um, the, uh, yeah, the Lipschitz constants uh, must be yeah, the Lipschitz constant is, uh, is, is yeah. act on these laminations. So my part of the theory of yeah. Uh, so my question is, how do we find these laminations? Uh, this is uh, uh, yeah. This is an um, um, uh, some. Yeah, this is, uh, I mean, this is a very substantial part of this paper of first, and I cannot explain now, but this is one of the, this is the heart of the paper, how you find these laminations. It's more, more complicated than that. You see, I gave, I gave, a, I gave a formula here. Uh, I gave a formula for the, for the distance in terms of length, lengths of curves. Uh, and the, the, the one thing which, which was known is that the set of simple closed curves is dense in the set of laminations. And the set of projective laminations is compact. So this formula uh, tells you that uh, this uh, uh, distance, this maximum in the distance is attained by a certain lamination. And then you have to work with this lamination. In fact. There's this, uh, you have to work with it uh, to complete it. And then to, uh, you see, the, 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 uh, there's a building block, in fact, for this. Uh, for this uh, West Lipschitz map, and also for the geodesics, the geodesic for this metric, uh, you have you have your you have your surface, and then you have uh, you have a lamination in the surface, a family of geodesics, a family of a, a family of disjoint geodesics, which is maximal in some sense. 
Okay, so uh, this family of these non geodesics, which is maximal, uh, uh, when I mean, when you well, being maximal, being maximal means that the complementary components are ideal triangles. And then you have these, uh, you have these, uh, you have uh, in, in this hyperbolic setting, you have these uh, foliations by horocycles, horocycles, horocycles having center the three endpoints of the ideal triangle. And then you have Lipschitz maps here. Taking, uh, taking a horocycle at length at a distance k from this region here to a horocycle at a distance l times k, and you do this, you do this, you do this uh, 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 stretch map. This is the word stretch, which is in the title of the paper. You do you, you do your stretch in each ideal triangles, and then you have to fit them together. And these are, this is how, how they appear these things. Um, so you can ask it. Yeah. Okay. So I think we should thank the speaker uh, because we are running out of time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.